Hello, I am uh, your mentor, Helena Mustafa, and today we are kicking off the course The Impact of Cultural Heritage uh, with an introductory uh, lecture. What is cultural heritage? So according to UNESCO definition, heritage is our legacy from the past, what we live for uh, with today and what we pass on to future generations, our cultural and natural heritage are both a replaceable source of life and inspiration. Uh, uh, this week lecture uh, will be an introduction about the meaning of cultural heritage. Uh, where we will dive into the typology and classification of cultural heritage, worldwide policies and conventions, when the related uh, phrases uh, started, how they have been developed and integrated in our daily life basis in the modern life, and what does it mean and worth to be a worldwide heritage in its different forms, which we are going to talk about right now. So the first type of cultural heritage is the tangible form of it, which uh, refers to any physical artifact uh, pr uh, produced, maintained and transmitted in society over the history. And it is divided into two clear parts or sections, movable, mostly displaced, and uh, we can see them in uh, museums, library, galleries, um, cultural centers, research institutions, and they are mostly uh, covering art, uh, works, artifacts, document recording, and uh, manuscripts, uh, photographs. And here, uh, as you can see, our example is um, a cuneiform, uh, clay cuneiform from the Assyrian period of old Mesopotamia, which was flourished uh, in the second millennium BC. And then we have the immovable section, which is generally covering uh, monuments, landscapes, uh, archaeological sites, historical complexes, and they can be residential, educational, or religious, as you can see here from the ruin of. Uh, the famous uh, World Heritage Site Palmyra in Syria, which, um, which is unfortunately has been uh, badly damaged due to the conflict, but this issue is, we are not going to talk about it uh, here anyways. Um, the second type is the intangible uh, form of cultural heritage. This uh, term, cultural heritage, actually has been developed and changed uh, considerably uh, recent, uh, in recent decades. It doesn't uh, uh, end and at mon monument and uh, collection of objects. It is also includes uh, uh, traditional or living expressions or uh, inherited from our ancestors uh, and passed to us, such as oral traditions, performing arts, uh, social practices, rituals, fist, uh, knowledge and practices concerning nature and uh, or even actually the knowledge and the skills to produce uh, traditional crafts, uh, such as uh, Hakawati, which is the storyteller of our modern life and used to be one of the um, important sources of entertainment in many countries of Middle East and uh, a form of social gathering. Or as you can see in the other photo uh, in the screen, the traditional way of producing laurel soap. Uh, this example from uh, my city, the city of Aleppo in Syria, which has a worldwide uh, reputation in, in this industry. And the masters are still following the same old uh, method. So, after we got a, a general overview of the main types or categories of cultural heritage, let's go back in time when these uh, terms uh, have been structured under certain conventions, policies and structures, and how even in time 
uh, these uh, terminologies and concepts have been uh, developed parallel with the globe needs and requirements regarding the identities, conflict, for example, growth, innovation, sustainability. So, as most of you know, UNESCO or United Nations Educational, Scientific and uh, Cultural Organization has uh, have been st has started or, or been established after the Second World War uh, to recover and heal communities uh, where mainly the cultural and educational uh, sectors have been badly damaged. Uh, and affected. Large number of uh, kids never went to schools. Large number of historical and cultural ruins have uh, uh, been badly damaged and looted and clearly a huge gap in the scientific research and the human development occurred. Uh, so the first convention we're talking about is the Hague uh, convention uh, of 1954 for the product, uh, protection of uh, cultural property in the event of armed conflict. Uh, this convention is highly applicable nowadays. An alarming situation in countries such as Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, Libya, etc. in the regard of the witnessed cultural cleansing, protecting cultural heritage in the event of armed conflict is more urgent than ever. The second one uh, is UNESCO uh, 1970 Convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing uh, the elite import, export and transfer of ownership of cultural property. It is directly related to the first one, directly related to the Hague uh, Convention actually. Um, in the time of war and big of security, not only the immovable heritage is, is targeted, but also the movable objects, whether from museums or illegal excavation. And we witnessed many cases uh, in the recent history and uh, maybe the looting of Baghdad National uh, Museum in 2033. Uh, uh, it is one of the most uh, remarkable, uh, unforgettable, unfortunate and unforgettable uh, examples. Now it is worth mentioning that this convention or, or this situation is not only applied during the wartime. Uh, it's, it, is, uh, it could happen and it is uh, related to every uh, situation. So uh, this is why uh, strict laws need to be applied and necessary uh, cooperation and the information sharing with the, the Interpol, custom officials and art market need to be applied. Uh, then let's talk about the UNESCO 1971 Convention concerning the protection of the world cultural and natural heritage. Uh, current threat uh, harm not only heritage but also cultural diversity and uh, intercultural dialogue with support, peace and sustainable development and as UNESCO uh, states what makes the concept of world heritage exceptional is uh, its uh, universal application. Universal application, world heritage sites belong to all the people of, of the world uh, irrespective of the territory and which they are and, and where they are uh, located. Uh, the next one is the uh, 2001 convention on the protection of the underwater cultural heritage due to conflict, political uh, trauma, ad uh, adverse geopolitical and economic situation and rapid and unsustainable urban development along coast damaged underwater cultural heritage. And here were a great cooperation and monitoring to, to, to prevent um, uh, illicit trafficking should be applied between the uh, different conventions that we already mentioned just now. The, these previous mentioned conventions and the drastic changes in the beginning of the new millennia have led organically uh, to the 2003 convention on the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage, which uh, raising very clear concerns 
Moreover, tangible and intangible heritage require different uh, approaches for, for, for preservation and safeguarding, which has been one of the main uh, motivation and driving uh, the conception of 2003 Convention for Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, which have been defined as the practices, representation, expressions, knowledge, skills, as well as the inst uh, instrument, objects, artifact, and cultural spaces associated uh, there with that communities, groups, and in some cases, individuals recognized as part of their cultural heritage. Thus, a solid uh, operational framework within the different conventions should work together on integrating the meaning intangible cultural heritage as a parallel aspect in the emerging sustainable life way. Uh, the last one, we are, the last convention we are going to talk about it today is the 2005 convention on the protection and promotion of the diversity diversity of cultural expressions came as an urgent need to reinforce and uh, demonstrate the values of culture and it is potential uh, for us as citizens in this uh, globe um, and that by promoting cultural and creative industries address quality education general equity sustainable cities and uh, so now I will be highlighting three main uh, programs regarding cultural heritage and its promotion and development. The first one will be uh, World Heritage Sites Program, uh, which is an implementation of UNESCO 1972 Convention. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, what makes the concept of World Heritage exceptional is uh, its universal application. World Heritage sites belong to all the people of the world, regardless of the territory on which uh, they are located. To be considered as, as a World Heritage site, there are 10 different criteria will be mentioned. Some of them like representing uh, a masterpiece of human creative or exhibit an important uh, interchange of human values, um, bear a unique uh, testimony to be a cultural tradition um, or to be an outstanding example representing significant uh, ongoing eco ecological or biological uh, process in the evaluation or to contain the most important and um, significant natural habitats uh, for in uh, conservation of biological diversity, including those containing uh, threatened the spices of outstanding universal value from the point of view of science or conservation. So UNESCO World Heritage uh, mission is, or it is exist, why this program is exist? It exists uh, for, for, for many reasons, and but mainly is to encourage countries to sign the World Heritage Convention and to ensure uh, the protection of their natural and cultural heritage to help these state parties to save, safeguarding world heritage um, properties by providing technical assistance and professional training or provide emergency assistance for the world heritage sites in uh, immediate danger. Moreover, support state parties public awareness building activities for world heritage conservation and encourage participation of the um, local population in the preservation of the cultural and natural uh, heritage. Uh, as we know, the World Heritage List contains both cultural uh, sites like uh, Petra in, in Jordan, um, and natural sites like the famous uh, Canadian Rocky Mountain, for example, or mixed cultural and natural uh, sites like the Mount Athos in Greece. Also, there is a red list, which uh, means sites under danger, like cultural landscapes and archaeological remains uh, of uh, Bamiyan Valley in Afghanistan. We all know uh, the dramatic uh, situation occurred uh, 
but also we are not going to talk about it in this. Uh, the second program is the Intangible Cultural Heritage. Uh, the 2003 convention highlighted the difference between intangible cultural heritage and uh, tangible culture and natural heritage and acknowledged the role of intangible her cultural heritage as a driver uh, of uh, sustainable uh, development in forcing and uh, promoting the living human treasure spreading through different domains we uh, actually mentioned them earlier but they are like uh, oral traditions uh, and expressions including uh, languages as uh, a tool of uh, the intangible cultural heritage uh, to be considered as intangible cultural heritage or, or what form or what type of practices uh, can be uh, considered as intangible cultural heritage so there are some criteria like uh, this form or practice it doesn't only represent inherited traditions from the past but also contemporary rural and urban practices in which diverse cultural uh, groups take part uh, inclusivity um, so we may uh, share expressions of intangible cultural heritage that are similar to those practiced by others, whether they are from the neighboring village, from a city on the opposite side of the world, or have been adopted by people who have migrated and settled in, in different regions. Uh, it needs to contribute to social cohesion, encouraging a sense of identity uh, and the responsibility which helps uh, individuals to feel part of one or different communities and to feel part of society at large. Uh, it needs to thrive on its basis in communities and depend on those whose knowledge and traditions move from generations to generation or uh, to other community maybe. Um, intangible cultural heritage can only be actually uh, recognized as such by its communities, groups or individuals that create. Uh, nobody else can decide uh, for them that a given expression or practice is their heritage or not. Now the last program I would like to highlight uh, which is related to the heritage concept actually based on the cultural heritage but stepping further into the innovation and uh, the required sustainable lifestyle. Uh, UNESCO Creative City Networks uh, had been established in 2004 which uh, aimed to strengthen the inner city cooperation which has been accepted as a strategic factor actually for sustainable development from economical, social, cultural and envir environmental point of view. Uh, cities are where the cultural and uh, creativity are lived and uh, practiced on a daily basis. It is therefore by simulating cultural industries, supporting uh, creation, promoting uh, citizen and cultural participation and approaching the public uh, sphere with a new perspective that public authorities in cooperation with the private sector and civil society can make the difference and support more sustainable urban development. Thus, this uh, network has uh, different cities and uh, in its uh, uh, hub, let's say, and uh, uh, these cities are uh, agreed, all of them, on some specific points. Uh, they are like the aims or the um, message of being a uh, UNESCO creative city. Uh, so they agree to share experience acquired from um, the best practices, uh, develop partnerships supporting the creativity and cultural industry, uh, intensify the participation in cultural life, 
um, and to integrate cultural into urban uh, development plans and the strategies. Uh, the network covers few different domains. Uh, all are based on the cultural background of the cities and address uh, the way of preserving, promoting, uh, and sharing knowledge about these domains. Um, so uh, the, these domains are, for example, literature. We have cities uh, like Beirut and Baghdad, uh, music. We have cities like Ramallah, Sundance, uh, film. We have Sofia, Sarajevo, gastronomy, cities like Zahle from Lebanon or Hatay from Turkey. Um, there are, uh, what else, media and art. Uh, for example, we have uh, cities like um, Toronto, it came to me, I, I cannot remember a city from in the list. Uh, we have uh, craft and folks like uh, Bursa from Turkey, uh, Isfahan from Iran, uh, Aswan from uh, Egypt. Uh, in the design sector, which is the last sector, we have cities like uh, Dubai and so as we are coming to the end of this um, presentation or lecture for this week, here are uh, the sources of uh, the presentation. You can see them uploaded already in the classroom for week one, plus I uploaded some extra sources and materials. Um, you can uh, check them out. As you can see, as a conclusion uh, of this presentation, cultural heritage is a concept adopting the development and change happening to the world and the human being. Uh, it is not freezed uh, on a certain point or understanding, on the contrary, actually. Actually, it is a human-based concept developed and changed parallel with the needs of our planet and it is citizens. Thank you so much for your attention and till next week where we will be talking about cultural heritage and local community. Have a nice week.